The other day, while browsing Reddit as usual, I came across an intriguing post by a user who went on saying, I have a Python 2 script that works fine in my 2020, but not in 2024. So I tried to use the online Python 2 to 3 converter, but it did not work. So, I decided to inspect the matter further, and what I found was interesting, to say the least. Apparently, Maya, the software we all know and love, or maybe not love sometimes, depending on who you are, had to go through a complete overhaul from Python 2 to Python 3, which was to developers and Maya users, especially those who use plugins and scripts, a nightmare. But why is that, you might ask? Well, in this video, we will see how this simple change destroyed the work of many years of development and how it made many tools obsolete, and how some developers and Maya artists are frustrated about it. Before we continue, I wanted to let you know guys, especially Maya users, if you need Maya plugins and scripts for modeling, retopology, rigging, animation, rendering, you name it, you will find a list of the best stuff in the description of this video. For example, for retopology, you can use a plugin like Z-Ray that allows you to create polygons on sculpted surfaces in a beautiful way. And if you want to do some hard surface modeling, you can take a look at plugins like Mod It, Plug It, and Stamp It, which will allow you to create complex hard surface models like robots, weapons, or anything else of this kind. For animation, I highly recommend the Pavel Barnap animation scripts because they are just amazing, and they are used by many VFX and game development studios. For simulation and effects, you can use some of the best tools like FumeFX for fire, smoke, and explosions, Pull Down It for destruction effects, and Ornatrix for hair and fur. So I highly recommend you check out these tools because it will save you a ton of time and headaches but it will also support this channel. So without further ado, let's jump right in. If you are like me, you are probably thinking what the hell Python 2 and Python 3 even are. Don't worry, I have got you covered. Originally Autodesk introduced Python 2 into Maya as one of the available scripting languages that people could use to make plugins and stuff, which was great and everything. But over time, it became even more important after they made it the standard scripting language for Maya, which led many developers in the community to become efficient at it and making it their main programming language. As a result, a substantial number of plugins that were developed by both these devs and Autodesk were all built on Python 2, which all helped us to do amazing things like rigging, animation, modeling, rendering, and so on. However, a wise person can tell you everything that has a beginning has an ending. So make your peace with that and all will be well. But if you tell that to a Maya developer, you might be hitting a nerve more than anything else. And to understand why, let me explain. Even when Python 3, the cooler and fancier version, became the mainstream language, Maya never transitioned to Python 3 due to all the content that was built around Python 2 at the time. Besides, I think it will be interfering with the work of productions by making their in-house Maya tools obsolete with the new update. But eventually, they had to face the harsh reality at some point. And this situation became real in 2020 after the Python Software Foundation announced that they were no longer offer official supports, updates, and security patches for it. So Autodesk, of course, smelled the danger and recognized that there was no other alternative but to confront the inevitable fate of switching to Python 3. But you see, this transition brought forth more problems than solutions. But why is that? I know most of us here are 3D artists, and we just want to create awesome things with Maya. But why is the transition a nightmare for developers? As far as I can see, it seems to me there is no way to make scripts written in Python 2 run directly in Python 3 at least without causing problems, making it necessary to make the needed changes, either manually or by using other tools. In other terms, all the Maya scripts that the developers have worked on and take a lot of pride in are almost useless without being updated, and they have to spend many nights to fix these problems, and I can only imagine how frustrating that is. 
my research shows that most of the two versions, I mean Python 2 and Python 3, are like twins who have grown apart over time. They share most of their language features with only some details that have changed, and other features that were either enhanced or removed altogether. So there is no reason to use Python 2 nowadays if you are starting from scratch unless we are talking about trying to sustain huge projects that were built with Python 2 previously. One of the main reasons for this transition problem is how they have totally different syntaxes. In computer programming, it is like the grammar and spelling rules in a language. Python 3 has a clear and easy to understand syntax compared to Python 2, where it is complicated and hard to interpret, which results in compatibility issues between the two. Think of it as a guy from Liverpool talking to your average American Joe. Both are speaking English, of course, but the American won't understand some words due to the regional differences. Now, I know that this will sound complex, but just hear me out. Another problem with the transition is how Python 3 uses Unicode as the default storing of strings, which isn't the case for Python 2. Basically, as an oversimplification, in Python 3, when you write a text, it can know directly if you are using characters, or let's just say words from different programming languages, and we call this Unicode, whereas in Python 3, to work with a special character from other languages, you would need to generally add the letter U before the text to tell Python if it is Unicode or not, which can cause problems in the transition and forcing the developers to check their scripts again to fix potential issues. But keep in mind that there are a lot of other differences and I'm aware that many programming experts might comment on the video to state how we oversimplified some of the explanation here. With that being said, I would like to mention that we make content primarily for a 3D-based audience, and it wouldn't make sense to get too technical about a different field. Another sad part of this transition is how the developers have to start from scratch again. Just like artists, developers want to bypass some tasks, and they generally do this with what is known as third-party libraries which is a collection of codes that make everything work and be more enjoyable. Because they can be secretly sneaked in your projects without anyone knowing that you didn't write the code, which is smart, similar to how we use annals to make our 3D work more practical and less tedious. It is also important to know that many of these libraries have not been ported to Python 3, and they were abandoned by its community of developers for the reasons we have previously mentioned. And as someone said, you should really consider replacing obsolete libraries. If a library has been ignored for long, what are the odds you will get any help when something goes wrong with them? Which makes sense. Anyways, this leaves the developers with only two possible solutions to choose from. One is finding suitable replacements, which is honestly hard. I mean, think about it. What are the odds of finding a library that does exactly the thing that the old one does? It's not that easy, isn't it? The other alternative is writing new libraries from scratch, which is a very hard solution as you can see. And this is especially troublesome for Maya projects because they often rely on third-party libraries. So when you use multiple libraries like that, it can also result in version conflict, especially when some are compatible with only Python 2 while others work with Python 3 which might require extensive troubleshooting and working long hours to figure out why. Now, third-party libraries aside, there are many other challenges that developers have to face to bring our favorite Maya plugins to life. First, on top of the needed time and resources which are required for the transition, it is essential to know that the shift isn't a simple matter of making minor adjustments, as it often necessitates a major overhaul of the code. I mean the code base, meaning that for those that aren't comfortable with Python 3, they have to learn the technical differences about them first, to acquire the needed knowledge to identify the lines of code that are specific to Python 2, to be able to adjust them accordingly. From a business standpoint, there are also cases where it is challenging, because the developers have a form of obligation towards the clients that still use Python 2. And they have to give them updates too, by the way. 
This means that they would have to figure out ways to write scripts that work with both Python 2 and Python 3 or double the work by releasing two versions with it. And while this can limit how much they can take full advantage of Python 3, from a moral standpoint, some have to do that for a transitional period at the very least. Now, let's talk about solutions. So let's get into my coding suit and present to you some of the best strategies that developers can adapt from the migration of scripts of Python 2 to Python 3. First of all, there are some tools such as 223 that automatically transform the scripts and even though manual adjustments could be needed, I think it can be decent for cutting some hours of work. Just as a developer says himself, I used 223 and converted more than 2000 lines of code of my own project and I think it worked right out of the gate, except for two or three exceptions that were easy to identify and rectify. Alternatively, if you can use AI such as ChatGPT, I think it can help to a certain extent. Generally speaking, from what I can see, the transition from Python 2 to Python 3 in Maya has undoubtedly posed its fair share of challenges for Maya developers, as it was very tricky to navigate. However, I think many developers have bypassed this problem and now they transitioned from Python 2 to Python 3 somehow and their plugins still function and operate just fine in Python 3. I hope you guys found this video useful and informative. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Also, please subscribe to the channel if you're new. Thank you guys very much for watching and I will see you in the next one.